All right. So today, <clears throat> we're going to continue looking at right triangles, right? This entire unit is basically a study of right triangles. So we went from our last unit where it was mostly triangles, right? We just talked about triangles for the most part. And, um, similarity of those, right? And we're going to talk about, we're talking about right triangles in this unit, okay? Um, and specifically today, we're going to talk about special right triangles. And what I mean by special right triangles, okay, are triangles are special relationships that kind of appear for certain kinds of right triangles. Okay, so if you look here, right, uh, the essential question is, what do you know about the side lengths and the trigonometric ratios in special right triangles? Okay, so we'll worry about the trig ratios here in a little bit. We're just gonna worry about finding side lengths for right now, I'm pretty sure, yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay, so, <coughs> Um, if you look here, right, uh, we've got, we're going to look at an isosceles right triangle, all right? So now what makes a triangle isosceles, anybody? Two, at least two congruent sides. So if you look here, we've got a picture of an isosceles triangle, right? Okay, two congruent sides, right there and right there, right? There and there. Okay. And we've labeled both those congruent sides x, right? Because certainly if this side is x, well, since it's isosceles, this side will also be x, okay? So we want to identify, remember in an isosceles triangle, we want to identify what the base angles are. So if you look at this triangle here, okay, what angles will be the base angles of the triangle? <laughs> x are side measures, not, not angle measures. <coughs> Think about, again, Base angles. Oh. Angles. Okay. What are the base angles? Angle A and angle B. Angle A and angle B, B are the base angles. Okay. I'll explain that. Right, right. The idea is, okay, shh, Eli, that the base angles are always opposite the congruent sides in an isosceles triangle, right. okay? Yeah. So we have to be careful with the word base, because I know we're used to, right, growing up and stuff like that, when we hear the word base, you think it's like the bottom of something, right? Shh. All right, guys. We think the bottom of something is the base, but this triangle here, right, we might be tempted then to say, okay, well, A and C, they're on the bottom of the triangle, and so those are the base angles. But that's not the way we define base angles before when we talk about isosceles triangles, okay? Isosceles triangles, their base angles are the ones that are opposite the congruent sides, right? So here's a side that goes to the angle B, then is the opposite angle, and here's the congruent side to this side, and that opposite angle is A. So A and B are called the base angles, okay? And why do we take the time... Why do we take the time to, like, name those things? What's special about the relationship between angle A and angle B? They will be what? Equal. Equal. Yeah, they're going to be the same. That's right. Okay. And so that means, what else do we know, though? Angle A plus angle B will have to add up to what measure? Angle C. Uh, okay, so in this case, yes, they're going to add up to be 90 degrees, yes. So we can say the measure of angle A plus the measure of angle B is 90 degrees. When two angles add up to 90 degrees, what do we call that? Complementary. complementary. Very good. Yes, complementary. Very good. Yes. What's, what's it called when we add up when we add to 180? Supplementary. supplementary. Right. So complementary. Here's a complementary relationship. So A and B are complementary. Okay. You can see the word right there. There's complementary right there. Okay. It's not the same complement as, you know, oh, you look very nice today, compliment. Right. That's complement with a P-L-I-M-E-N-T. This is complementary like you know, they kind of like go together. Um, they go, go well together or something like that. They complement each other. Okay. So, letter B. Use the isosceles triangle theorem to write a different equation relating the base angle measures. So like we said, we know that angle A plus angle B is 90 degrees. But we also know that angle A is going to equal the measure of angle B, right? We know that base angles are congruent. So you can say that they're equal. <coughs> and so... If A plus B is 90 degrees, and if A is equal to B, then what must the measures of A and B be? 45. 45. 45. How'd you get that? 
divided by two is 45. 90 divided by two is 400, or sorry, it's 45, that's right. Okay, so these two <coughs> angles are 45 degree angles. Okay. <coughs> and so this is one of our uh, special right triangles, okay? Since angle A is going to be 45 degrees and angle B is going to be 45 degrees, okay? We call this special right triangle a 45-45-90, okay? And triangles that have 45-45-90 kind of relationship, their sides are always going to be kind of in a similar relationship too, okay? So there's a relationship for their sides. So letter D here asks us to use Pythagorean theorem to find the length of the hypotenuse in terms of the length of each leg x. So we know that AC is going to be x, we call it x. We know that BC is also a length of x. We want to come up with an expression for AB that also uses x. Now obviously this can't be x as well because this is not an equilateral triangle, so they're not all going to be the same size. We have to come up with a way to um, solve for uh, that third side there. So let's go to Blake. So Blake, <coughs> Pythagorean theorem, right, is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. So where can I put this side, x? Where should that go, a, b, or c? Okay, so yeah, a, or what other letter can we put it in for? C is the hypotenuse. Do we know, do, is the hypotenuse labeled as x? Yeah, it's not. So either a or b, though, right, because x is a leg. So I'll put it in for a. So I'm going to go this way kind of here. So x squared plus, and now what can I put the other x in for here? Yep, in for b. And we don't know this third side. We do not know this third side, so we're going to call that c. We'll just leave it as c squared. All right. Now this might look, you might when people looking at this say, Mr. Wabar, this is ridiculous. There's still more letters. There's, there's no numbers in here, and you're going to try and simplify this? Well, yeah, we can simplify it, because if I have x squared plus x squared, that combines together, doesn't it? How can we write that? X Two x squared, right? If I have one x squared and I add another x squared, I now have two x squared. So I could rewrite this as two x squared equals c squared. Okay. And if we want to solve for c here, I don't know. I want to know what c squared is, right? We want to take the square root of both sides to get c by itself, and then with c equals the square root of two x squared. But we can simplify this. Because I see a perfect square right here, don't you? X squared, that's a perfect square. And so we can rewrite that as the square root of 2 times the square root of X squared. And what's the square root of X squared? It's, it's just X. So the square root of 2 times X. And so this third missing side right here, I'm going to, we could write it as the square root of 2 times X. I'm going to rewrite it the other way as X times the square root of 2. Okay x times the square root of 2 is that missing side. <clears throat> okay. So, here's something a little bit more powerful, okay, than the Pythagorean theorem. To use Pythagorean theorem, how many sides do we need to know? We only need to know two. We can find that third side, right? So, Pythagorean theorem, we only need to know two sides. However, if I have a 45-45-90 triangle, like right here, right, 45 degree angle, 45 degree angle, 90 degree angle, if I know one side, if I know one side, I can figure out all the rest of the sides. So for example, if I know that AC, if I know that AC is a length of three, what does that mean BC has to be? Three as well. And what does that mean AB has to be? It would be three times the square root of two. Right? If this side's 3, that means x is 3. That means this side's 3 as well. That means this side is 3 times the square root of 2. If this side is 5, that means this side's 5. That means this side is 5 times the square root of 2. Okay, right there. Okay. And this is 10. This is 10. And this is 10 times the square root of 2. Okay. Now, if we know this side first, well, that takes a little bit more work. And we'll, look, we'll look at a situation like that in a little bit, but not right now. Okay? Not right now. Okay? So, this is something that you guys will have to memorize, okay? Or you can, like, come up with it like we just did here where we use Pythagorean theorem, right? But you will need to memorize this relationship. I cannot give this to you on a test because you don't get it on the crest, and so I don't want to give it to you on a test. Now, on a quiz, you may, you may come to your, back to your book and re reference this. But for a test, 
you will need to have this triangle memorized, okay? The fact that the leg is x, the leg is x, and the hypotenuse is x times the square root of 2. You need to memorize that relationship. All right. If you would, please, turn the page. Okay, we're going to look at the other, another special right triangle here. Okay, and this is the, there's only two of them, so this is the second one. Okay, this is the second one here. <coughs> okay. So now, if you look at this here, this big triangle, is that a right triangle? No. no, it is not a right triangle, okay? So you might be wondering, Mr. Widmeyer, we're using the Pythagorean theorem and stuff like that. You said we're all only studying right triangles here, and yet here we have, and it says here, discover relationships that always apply in a right triangle formed as half of an equilateral triangle. So here we have an equilateral triangle, okay? A, B, D, A, B, D, right, is an equilateral triangle, and B, C is a perpendicular from point B to side AD. So we have a perpendicular side or line right here to side AD. Okay, so the directions here are to determine all three angle measures in triangle ABC. Well, we already know one angle measure, right? What's the measure of this angle right here? 90 degrees, right? So that's easy. So the angle measure of angle BCA, BCA, that's that angle right there, K is 90 degrees. Okay? So we need to come up with the measure of angle A here, and we need the measure of angle ABC. So why do you say 45? Okay, but, but we divided 90 by 2 earlier because in our earlier triangle, these two angles were equal, and they both had up to 90. In this case, A and this angle here, they're going to both add up to 90 as well, but they don't necessarily have to be equal, right? Because this side doesn't look like it equals this side. But what kind of triangle did we say triangle ABD was? Equilateral. So what does that mean its angle measures will be? Equal, or what specific measure, though? Care, not 90. 60, right? All, if angles in the triangle, if all three angles are the same, they have to be 60, because 60 plus 60 plus 60 is 180, right? That adds to 180. So that means angle A has to be what measure? 60 degrees. Okay, so angle A is 60 degrees. The measure of angle A is 60 degrees. Okay? And then the last angle to figure out is this angle right here. But if we know these two, if this is 60 and that's 90, how can we figure out this third missing angle here? We have to add them up and then minus Yeah, that's right. So 60 plus 90 is 150. 180 minus 150 is 30. So the measure of angle ABC is 30 degrees. Okay? Now, letter B here, and we're not going to actually write this out, but we'll, we'll talk about this, though. So we said that's 30 degrees. How do you know that triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC? How can we prove that ABC here is congruent to triangle DBC? Do you guys see, see anything else that we have in common between these two triangles? Yeah, BC, it's shared. Okay. What will angle D's measure be? 60 degrees, and this is going to be a right angle as well, and that means this has to be a 30 degree angle. So how can we prove these two triangles congruent? What congruent shortcut could we use? Mm, not Pythagorean theorem. That's not to prove triangles congruent. Okay, so we could say angle side angle, right? Because we have an angle, 30 degrees, congruent to the 30, a side, and then an angle. And besides angle side angle, what's the other one we could use? Uh, we don't have all three sides. We can't use side side side. Angle, angle, side. Angle, angle, side. Remember, angle, angle is not, not a congruence. That's a similarity. But angle, angle, side, or... In fact, I'll write that right here. So angle, angle, side, or... Ooh. Or um, uh, angle, side, angle. One of those two. Okay? <coughs> These two triangles are congruent by angle, angle, side, or angle, side, angle. But don't worry too much about that. We're not going to be focused on proving triangles congruent. That's just a little review from before. Okay. So, now that we know that, this angle here again is 60 degrees. This angle here again is 30 degrees. We're going to take this triangle and we're going to remove it from that situation and just have it right here. Okay? And so... <coughs> if this side is X, and remember that comes from this side right here. <coughs> 
If A to C is X, what's the length then from A to D? What would you guys say? If A to C is X, X squared. not X squared, careful. If A to, okay, let me try it this way. If A to C is X, what's C to D going to be? X as well, right? So right, so then the full length A to D will be 2X. And so if from A to D is 2X, what would B to D be? 2x as well. Remember, this is an equilateral triangle, so BD will be 2x, and so therefore AB is also going to be 2x, and so down here with this AB, we can also say that is 2x. <coughs> okay, because remember, it came from an equilateral triangle. So if that's x, then this hypotenuse here will be 2x. Notice where the x is. It's opposite that 30 degree angle, and the 2x is opposite the right angle there. Now we need to find this third missing angle here, and the way we're going to find that is using the Pythagorean theorem find the length of BC. Okay, so let's set up the Pythagorean theorem here. Let's go to uh, someone we haven't heard from yet. Ray! Okay, so Ray, remember, Pythagorean theorem is A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Okay, so this X here, this X, where can I plug that in? For A, for B, or for C? A. A, that's right. Okay, so we'll plug it in for A. All right, or we also could have plugged it in for the B as well, right? The 2X, where does that have to go? C. In for C. That's right. Very good, Ray. Very good. So we'll plug 2X, the entire quantity there, in for C. So I have X squared plus B squared equals 2X squared. <coughs> okay. So let's see here. X squared, well, that's just X squared. <coughs> 2X squared. What will that give us? 4x squared. That's right. 4x squared. Okay? So this becomes 2x quantity squared becomes x squared plus b squared equals 4x squared. So there's our new kind of step there. Okay? And again, you might be saying to yourself, Mr. Widmeyer, this is awfully confusing. There's all letters here. There's not really any numbers except for that 4 and the 2s and the powers. <clears throat> but we do have like terms here. I see an x squared on this side. I see a 4x squared on this side. We can combine those, right? And I want to solve for b here, so I'm going to subtract an x squared from both sides. Okay? And so on this side here, I'm left with b squared, and this side I'm left with 3x squared. Okay? b squared equals 3x squared. And then what can we do here to solve? Square root both sides. Okay, so we get b equals the square root of 3x squared. But that simplifies, doesn't it? Because again, x squared is a perfect square. So I could rewrite that as the square root of 3 times the square root of x squared. And what's the square root of x squared? It's just x. So it becomes x times the square root of 3. Whew. And there's our relationship. Okay? <clears throat> Questions on any of that? All right. So do you have to remember, like, all this stuff about how we, like, got the square root of x square root of 3? No. But, it, but what you do need to remember is this relationship. Now, again, on our quiz that we will be having, you will be able to go back into your book and look up at this relationship and use it to solve for triangles and things. However, however, okay, um, when it comes to the test time, you will need to have this relationship memorized, okay? You'll need to have it memorized, all right? And in fact, they have it nicely kind of organized for us here at the top of the next page, page 711. There it is summarized, the two re special relationships for the special right triangles. Why are they special? Because these relationships only work if you have these kind of angles. 45, 45, 90, that's the relationship between the sides. And 30, 60, 90, that's the relationship between the three sides. Okay, what's the point of this again? How many sides for Pythagorean to use Pythagorean theorem to solve a right triangle? How many sides do you need to know? Two. For these triangles, how many sides do you need to know? No, we just need to know one. Just need to know one because once you find, so once you have one side, you can use like for example here, and once you know this side, for example, if I know that this is x, that means this side will be the same measure, and this will be that number times root two. Same thing here. So. 
let me show you how we can put this into practice here. <clears throat> okay, Shh. let me show you. So for example, one, okay, so all that stuff was like how, you know, how we got these, val these relationships, but now we're going to see it in practice. So example one, find the unknown side lengths in each right triangle. So if you look here, here's a right triangle. We have two unknown side lengths. This one here, AC, and we also don't know BC. Okay. This is a special right triangle, though. All right. So, Dorian, which one of these, which one of these two special right triangles can we use here? The first one here or the second one? Which one can you use to help us solve this special right triangle right here? So you want to use this one to solve this right triangle right here? Okay, so were you, were you just guessing, or did you have a reason for why you picked that one? Okay, so Dwayne, let's look at it, though, here. Look at the angle measures here. 45, 45, 90. Right, you see that? Which one of these two triangles does it match to? Yeah, the first one. That's one we're going to use. That's okay, but I mean, that's, you, you see there's a reason for it, right? You didn't have to guess. Now you can see. That's all you had to do. Okay, so we're going to use this triangle. So this 10, what side does that match to in our kind of like formula triangle over here? Yeah, the hypotenuse, which is labeled as x times the square root of 2. So we're going to say that 10 here is equal to x times the square root of 2. You could write it right here if you wanted to. Okay. What does that make these two other sides that we don't know, Dorian, according to this formula kind of triangle here? What can we label these two sides as? What does it say in our formula? triangle here. They're just labeled as x, right? They're just labeled as x, so we'll call these just x. Okay? So again, this 10 matches to the x square root of 2 side. How do we know? Well, it's opposite the right angle, just like 10 is opposite the right angle. So that's like the x root 2 side. And then opposite the 45, opposite the 45, these are both going to be the x sides. Now, here's the trouble. This side, I already know it's a length of 10, right? This side is a length of 10. But I need to figure out these two side lengths. How can I figure out what x is here? What do we need to do? Not plug it in. We can't use Pythagorean theorem. We only have one side. Look at the equation here, folks. What does 10 match with? x times the square root of 2. I don't want to know what x times... I, I want to know what just x is, though. So what can I do with this equation here to solve for x? I want to get the x by itself. I don't want to square root it. Nope. Nope. We could square. Well, we could square it. Eh, yeah, that actually wouldn't be wrong. We could do it that way. So, what is what is with the x that we need to get rid of here? Square root of two. And what what operation is between the x and the root two here? Is it add, subtract, multiply, divide? It's being multiplied, right? So if we divide both sides by the square root of two here. Okay, we divide both sides by the square root of 2. Okay, you can cancel it out, and you get that x is x equals 10 over the square root of 2. Okay. And so that's our side x, and so that means this side here is 10 over the square root of 2, and this side here also will be 10 over the square root of 2, because that's what x is equal to. Okay, so that's our measures right there. Okay, so this side is 10, right? It was given to us as 10. And these two sides here are 10 over root 2 and 10 over root 2. Now, someone said to square both sides here, right? When we had 10 equals x square root of 2 like that, someone said square both sides. And we could do that. Okay, what's 10 squared? 100. Now, x square root of 2 squared, that means we square x and we square the square root of 2. What's the square root of 2 squared? Just 2, right? And so we can divide, we can start solving for x here, we'll divide both sides by 2. Okay, the 2's cancel. 100 divided by 2 is 50. It's getting kind of cramped in there. Okay. If we, so x squared is equal to 50. If we square root both sides here, we get x equals the square root of 50. Now you might say, Mr. Widmeyer, we just said that x was equal to 10 over the square root of 2. How are you tell me now that x is equal to the square root of 50? Well, guess what? They're the same value. Square root of 50, 10 divided by the square root of 2. They're the exact same value. You can't see it, sorry. They're the exact same value. 
okay? Square root of 50 is the same value as 10 over the square root of 2, okay? Of course, square root of 50 we can simplify a little bit more, but yeah, that works. Okay. So either of those two work, okay? That's right, he's, he's tuckered. Okay, so uh, letter B, let's try another one here, all right? These are pretty tricky, okay, as you can probably already tell. These are a little tricky. Let's try another one here, though. Letter B, okay? Letter B. Yeah, there we go, okay. Okay, so let's try this next one here, letter B, like I said. Okay, so letter B, we now have a different kind of special right triangle. It's a 30, 60, 90. 30, 60, 90. So, oh my gosh, let's see the calculator. All right, so we'll go to Colin W. So, Colin, this triangle, which of our formula triangles are we going to use to solve for the missing sides? Are we going to use the first one here or the second one? Again, we have 30, 60, 90 is the special right triangle here. So which one of these two are we going to use? The second one, right, because that's what it matches to. Exactly right. Okay. So, okay, we'll look here and see. We have 5 square root of 3, and that's the side that's opposite the 30 degree angle. So what does that match to according to our kind of formula triangle up here? Which side is opposite the 30 degree angle here? Colin. Which side is opposite the 30 degree angle? The 60 is an angle. Which side in our formula here is opposite in our triangle? Which side is opposite the 30 degree angle? Or what's the label for the side that's opposite the 30 degree angle? X, yeah. And so opposite the 30 degree angle here, this side is equal to the X side then. So that's equal to X. So 5 squared is 3 is X, okay? And so let's come up with the other side. There's the 60 degree angle, right? So according to our formula here, which side is opposite the 60 degree angle? Yeah, x times the square root of 3. And so it means this side is x times the square root of 3. Okay? <clears throat> and that means then the hypotenuse side, opposite the right angle here, is 2x, twice x. I'm oh, sorry, I missed that. Twice x. There it is, 2x. Okay? So there our sides are labeled. So you can see here, part of the work, okay, is first of all figuring out which one of these triangles, which, well, you know, this triangle matches to which one of our special rights. And then it's a matter of matching the sides here. So again, the 5 square root of 3 was opposite the 30, so that's x. Okay? The 2x is opposite the 90. And then the x square root of 3 is opposite the 60. Okay? And so we match up those sides from our formula triangles, okay? All right. Does everyone understand that much so far, at least? Because I know this is tricky, but are we okay with that? How I, where I got these numbers from? Okay, so what's the trouble? See, that, so guys, if you're not paying attention right now, that is a really unwise choice. I know some of you guys can, like, kind of get away with that, okay? Sometimes you can, right? You will not get away with it here because it's difficult enough as it is if you choose not to pay attention right now, okay? So, but just heads up. This is not easy stuff. Maybe I should have said that before we started here, okay? Alex, I'll go over it one more time here, okay? Okay, okay, fair enough, fair enough. But... What we did earlier, okay, in class here, we looked at two specific kinds of right triangles. One, where it was a 45, 45, 90, very specific angles, right? One, where we end up with a 30, 60, 90, again, very specific angles, okay? Those two triangles resulted in special relationships between the sides, okay? If you have a right triangle, but it's not a 45, 45, 90, or it's not a 30, 60, 90, you can't use these two triangles. You're, they're, they're, you're you know, it's... You're, you're done. You can't use those. You use Pythagorean theorem maybe or something like that. But since we do have these two special right triangles, and since the two examples we looked at were those special right triangles, we can use these relationships. 
Okay? So, in this first example, we saw that this triangle was 45, 45, 90. So the sides of this right triangle, okay, will be in the same relationship as these sides right here because it's also a 45, 45, 90. Okay? They're going to have the same relationship. X, X, and X times the square root of 2. Likewise here, the 30, 60, 90 triangle will be in the same relationship as this 30, 60, 90 triangle. It's kind of the generic one. Okay? 30 degrees, opposite that is the X side. 60 degrees, opposite that is the X times the square root of 3 side. And the 90 degree angle, opposite that is the 2X side. And you'll see, we did that. Yeah, we just, we just take, we, we took these sides and matched them to this triangle. But we're not done yet, right? Because we only have one side measure. We want to figure out what this side measure is and what this side measure is. Okay? So does that, are you yeah, caught up to that point? Okay. With the x squared, or what do you mean? This one right here? X times the square root of 3? Okay, what? No, I'm thinking... Okay. Mm -hmm. So, good question. Good question. We're going to look at that here right now. So, if x, if x is this side, that means x is equal to 5 times the square root of 3. So, anywhere else I see an x here, I can replace that x with what value? 5 times the square root of 3. So, for example, the hypotenuse here is going to be 2 times what? Five. Yeah, 2 times 5 square roots of 3. Let you just plug the x value in. In this case, we know what x is. Okay. So what is two times five? It's ten. Nope. No, there's no square there. It's just ten square root of three. So this side right here is a length of ten times the square root of three because it's two times x. So two x is ten times the square root of three. That's the length of that side. Okay. <coughs> yeah. And now for this side, it's going to be x times the square root of three. But what's x? Five. So it's going to be five square roots of three times the square root of three. Okay, we plug five square roots of three in for the x, right? X is five square roots of three, so we plug it in for x, and then multiply it by root three. <coughs> now, since this three is in a square root and this three is in a square root, they can multiply together. Okay? What is three times three? 9. So it's 5 times the square root of 9. But what's the square root of 9? 3. three. So it's 5 times 3. So the answer is 15. So this side here is 15. Okay. So I don't know why I like have 2. There we go. So I'll the square root of 9 is 3. Yeah. You can, yeah, since you can actually do the square root there, you can just leave it. So here, for example, square root of 3, you can't take the square root of 3 as a decimal. But square root of 9 we can do, and so we just simplify it down to 15. Okay? All right. Questions on any of that? I'm sure everyone's like, I don't even know a question to ask. So we'll, we'll look at two more here, and then I'll give you guys um, a little assignment. Okay? So we'll do two more here, two more together. So let's look at the next page. Okay. All right, so again, I'm going to draw up on the board here a special right triangle. <coughs> so I want to make sure I draw it similar to what they have on the other side. So I drew our special right triangles up on the board here. So let's look at these next two problems, and then, then we're done, okay? So, number five here. Okay, number five. Uh, so Curtis, 
right? You can see the kind of triangle we have here, 30, 60, and 90. So Curtis, which one of our two triangles here does that, is that going to match to? Is that going to match that first one there, or is that match the second one there? The first one. Shh, Josh, please don't shout out answers. I asked Curtis. And you're right, it's the second one. So th thank you for sticking to what you think is right, okay? All right, so 30, 60, 90, it matches to that second one there, exactly right, because it's also 30, 60, 90, okay? So in this triangle, we have this side. We're told it's 4 times the square root of 3. Now, what does this side match to in the triangle up on the board there, our kind of formula there? What side? 2x, yes. So this is equal to 2x. Okay? What does this side here, it's opposite of the 30 degree angle, what does this side match to up here on our picture? X. Very good, Curtis, that's right. And what does this side match to from our picture? It's opposite the 60 degree angle, so what, what does it match to? Which, yeah, which, one, which side here is opposite the 60 degree angle? Side, carefully, give me angle measurement. Opposite of the 60 degree angle here is x squared of 3. So this side is going to be the x squared of 3 side. Okay? Okay? Great. So, in order to... Focus here, folks. I know. This is tough. In order to find these two missing sides here, I need to know what x is. Okay? Right? I know that 4 times the square root of 3 is equal to 2x. So I'm going to write that over here. 4 square root of 3, is that equals 2x. And so, Curtis, if I want to get 2, if I want to get the x by itself here, what do I need to get rid of? What's with the x I need to get rid of? A 2. So how do we, un how do we get rid of that? What should I do to both sides? Not negative. It's 2 times x, right? How do you undo 2 times? Divide. We'll divide both sides by 2. Okay, now... The 4 and the 2 we can simplify because they're both numbers, right? It's not in a square root, so the 4 and the 2 cancel out and become just 2 square root of 3. We just divide the 4 by 2 and we get x is 2 times the square root of 3. Okay? So again, this side, this side is the length of 4 square root of 3. x is equal to 2 square root of 3. That means what's the length of this side? If this side's x, what can we say the length is? 2 times, two times the square root of 3. That's x. So we can just say that side length is 2 times the square root of 3. Okay? This side length is x times the square root of 3. But we know what x is. What is x? 2 times the square root of 3. So it's 2 square root of 3 times the square root of 3. Yes. So it's 2 times the square root of 9. And what's the square root of 9? 3, so it's really just 2 times 3, which is really just 6. So this side length here is 6. Okay. I was weird. I put box, box, and then circle. I don't know why. That's weird. Okay. All right, thank you very much, Dr. Curtis and everybody else. Shh. Right, let's go do one more here. So questions on this one. So again, the trick here is to find what x is. And once you figure out what x is, what x is you can figure out the rest of the side there. So let's go to this last one. Shh. One more here. Shh. Okay, so yes, Robbie, actually your number's up here. So which, which one does this triangle match up to, the first one or the second one there? First one, so 45, 45, 90, that's right. And so this side that we know, 2 root 6, again, that's one of our sides, what is that 2 squared to 6? What does that correspond to in our picture up here? An x. So x equals 2 square roots of 6. That's nice. Okay? Um, what does... Listen up here, folks. Blake, Corey. QR here, what does that correspond to? x. It's also opposite of 45, so it's x. And what does the hypotenuse here, opposite the right angle, what does that correspond to in our picture? x times the square root of 2. Okay. Now, this problem is really nice because we know what x is. It gives, us, gives it to us. So if pr is a length of 2 root 6, what is qr's length going to be? 2 root 6. Okay. And then what will pq's length be here, Robbie? Well, we know what x is. 
right? X is 2 times the square root of 6. So this is going to equal 2 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 2. Okay, 2 times the square root of 6 times the square root of 2. Now, what numbers can we multiply together there? The 6, because it's underneath the square root, and the 2. So it becomes 2 square root of 12. Whoops, almost wrote it wrong there. So 2 square root of 12, you can barely see it. There we go. Okay. And yeah, we can simplify it, okay? So the directions don't say to sim didn't say we have to simplify it, but yeah, we can break that down because the square root of 12 is really the square root of 4 times the square root of 3, and the square root of 4 is 2, and so we get really 4 square root of 3 there. Okay, I'm okay if you stopped right here, though, too, if you wanted to stop right there without simplifying it, but you also should be able to simplify it as well. So either one there, they're the same thing. 2 square root of 12, 4 square root of 3, they are equivalent. Okay. Ugh. All right, questions on any of that? Is that a little bit more clear, hopefully? The key is to find the x value, okay? So, for example, again, this side here is 2 times the square root of 6, okay? And that means this side is also x, 2 square root of 6, and this side is just x times the square root of 2. So it's 2 root 6 times the square root of 2, which is 2 times the square root of 12, okay? All right. So, yes. So for your assignment tonight, okay, why don't you, I want you to try here. Let me see. I want to be careful. Okay. So I would like you guys to try <laughs> just try numbers one through six. 1 through 6 on page 716, numbers 1 through 6. Mm -hmm. 716, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and 6. 1 through 6. 716, 1 through 6. Okay, I'll write on the board too. 716, 1 through 6. Okay. We'll probably go over this some more tomorrow too because of how difficult it is. It's a challenge.